Hello everyone, my name is Brent Davidoff um, and I'm here on behalf of Harambi Youth Employment Accelerator and I'm coming to you pre-recorded from Johannesburg, South Africa. And I really am excited to be here for this um, conference and I think that um, the idea of getting together to talk about meaningful conversations is what we need right now in our world. So um, let me begin with a story. Sipo Kazi is a 21-year-old single mother who lives in Kwamashu, KwaZulu-Natal. She's got a positive attitude, she's brave, and has a really strong work ethic. But unfortunately, she hasn't been able to put that work ethic to use because almost five years now, she has been looking for work. And although she's gotten peace jobs along the way, she hasn't gotten any sort of stable permanent job that can help give her the security and stability that she needs. So even though she's got that positive attitude, um, she's at a point of desperation, teetering on the edge of hopelessness. Sipo Kazi is part of the majority of 18 to 35 year olds in South Africa that are unemployed, many of whom are discouraged from even looking for work. It's a crisis that um, desperately needs solutions and the best people and organizations coming together. But Sipokazi is not just a statistic. She's a whole human being with dreams, aspirations, and hopes. And so one night while lying in bed, unable to go to sleep, she is scrolling on her phone and decides to look up an organization called Harambi. A friend of hers told her about it and said that she should go there, sign up because um, they help young people find jobs that are close to them. I mean, that sounded great, but um, she was a bit wary because a lot of the job websites she'd visited before like were, were scams. And she searched for Harambi and then this site came up, sayouth.com. Mobi, powered by Harambi. She went on to sayouth.mobi and it, the first thing is it looked legit. Okay. And the next thing that um, Sipokazi noticed was that the site was not consuming any internet data. It was a zero rated site, which meant that she didn't have to spend um, any of those precious 30 megabytes um, that she had and are so expensive because data is so expensive in South Africa, one of the real barriers. So she goes on to sayouth.mobi. She's navigating around and before she uh, signs up, she wants to see if there's someone that she can speak to. And right then and there, she sees that SA Youth has a support line, toll free. And it says that she can call that number and she will speak to one of the SA Youth guides who will help her make a plan, navigate her way from the current situation that she's in and help her make use of the sayouth.mobi platform to hopefully help her achieve her goals. And that's exciting. But remember, it's late at night, it's 3 a.m. actually. And she's gonna to have to wait until after the weekend on Monday until she can phone in and speak to one of those guides. It seems like an excruciatingly long amount of time for her. And so as those feelings of despair start to set in again, she sees a message pop up. And it's a message from the SA Youth chatbot, customer work seeker support chatbot. And Sipokazi hasn't really interacted with the chatbot before, but what she does know is that the message she gets is warm, friendly, and immediately begins to create a connection with her. And she sends a message um, with her ask, basically, can you help me find a job? And she's really like pleasantly surprised and amazed where she gets an immediate response um, that is quite uplifting. And before she knows it, Sipokazi has had a deep and meaningful conversation with the SA Youth chatbot. She's gotten practical tips on how to improve her CV. The chatbot has asked her 
if she has done any volunteering or not. She said that she had. So the chatbot says you've got to put that on your CV because employers value people who spend time volunteering. Um, the chatbot also gave her the instructions she needed to know how to sign up to the SA Youth of Moby network. And most importantly, it uh, ended off the conversation with um, a dose of inspiration with one of the many quotes that the chatbot likes to share. So by the end of this conversation, Sipokazi had gotten a mixture of practical advice and tips to act on, together with inspiration, which acts as the fuel for that action that brings her one step closer to achieving her goals. Now that SAU.mobi platform is, is powered by Harambi. After almost um, 11 years of operating Harambi, which started out as a small not-for-profit with 40 young people in a room uh, with no work experience, matched with a couple of employers who were willing to take a chance on them because they knew that um, what really matters is a person's attitude and because skills can be taught. And we saw some really incredible results of what can happen when you invest time and attention in young people. But that's not going to solve this crisis of youth unemployment. So over the years, we've scaled these different solutions um, to help cover and reach more and more young South Africans to the point now where we have 2.9 million young people in our network and, and growing. Um, and if they come to the sayouth.mobi site, they can sign up and find earning and learning opportunities that are close to them. And that's so important. But the truth is we've learned that there's one ingredient that is so essential to make this happen and if we want to have and make a dent on this problem never mind solve it we have to work with partnerships we have to work with partners both in public government private social and really come together fall in love with the problem not our solutions and then that is when the system begins to change so returning to our story about sepokazi um she was interacting with that chatbot, which is built on um, some traditional chatbot technology, intent-based natural language processing. And it's an illustration, I guess, of how Harambi is embracing these technologies to create meaningful conversations. And the truth is, from my um, interactions with other people in the conversational AI um, community, is that everyone actually is um, aiming to have meaningful, impactful conversations, even in sales. I think that people who connect to conversation also connect to meaning and purpose and, and helping people along the way. So I, I really am grateful that I get to work in an organization and focus a lot of my time on constructing chatbots um, like the customer service um, work seeker support chatbot that provides 24 7 seamless support together with our incredible guides but i think what differentiates um, this technology and and something that is a call out to the not-for-profits ngos and impact-driven organizations out there is some overarching design principles that it's about how you use this technology and not just what it is the technology is available so how we approach it again is everything and there's one quote for me which sums up those first principles of design um, perhaps someone in the in the chat can help me attribute the quote um, because it escapes me now but here's the quote start where you are use what you have do what you can and for me, it sums up what's important to bear in mind when harnessing the power of conversational AI and any of those technologies. Start where you are. You know, um, don't wait. Don't wait for people to come to you as an organization, no matter how few or many resources you have. Start where you are and 
no one is um, waiting for you to come. You, you've got to take action. You've got to just start where you are. Use what you have, especially um, um, impact-driven organizations, not-for-profits, um, need to use what they already have to create and to incorporate these technologies because um, the technology is out there. I'm sure there's a lot of uh, representation here from some of those organizations that have powerful uh, products, that, um, maybe discounts that are offered, um, freemium you know, products. But more importantly, we have to trust that we have the brains and talent within an organization that if given a culture of stepping out of their comfort zone, can contribute incredibly to the advancement of, a techno of, of an organization, especially young people, um, maybe also even young people at heart, um, given the chance to step out of their comfort zone, an organization then can use what they have, the talent and brains, to really achieve incredible things. And another thing that um, organizations that um, are impact-driven have that they can work with is purpose. And purpose is such a strong driver because it infuses everything you do from the operations to the design um, with a sense of purpose, which helps you overcome obstacles and make the whole experience um, uniting and, and powerful. Lastly, um, do what you can. Don't expect perfection. It's not about you looking good. It's about what people out there need. So you have, as um, especially those people and organizations that have unique talents, um, don't hold back. Do what you can. Because, again, um, now there's no moment like the present. So just do what you can. Don't wait for perfection. And use data. And, and you know, one of the, I guess, uh, I wouldn't say the pitfalls, but vulnerabilities that impact-driven organizations have, um, and even not-for-profits like Karambi, um, is that we become very invested in our solutions. And the call is to, as I said before, not fall in love and become attached with our solutions, but to rather fall in love with the problem. And what that means when designing is, and especially pro like chatbots, it means um, embracing and in fact pursuing data and feedback that can help you, um, what sums it up is, is create like you're right and test like you're wrong. So believe in the creation, you know, go for it. Believe in, um, if you've got a chatbot that you want to put out there, go for it. Um, or whatever it is. But then make sure you're testing. Because the testing is what will help the further iterations. Really make sure you're staying in touch with the needs of people. Rather than staying in touch with your own assumptions of what people need. So returning to the story of Sipokazi. What does she need now to help her get closer to... Um, the next chapters eventually culminating in perhaps a, a, a happy ending. What's needed is an approach that is highly intentional and embraces the incredible technology that is coming our way because the future is now. So if you have the intention, then you can take advantage of this incredible moment where conversational AI is advancing at mega proportions. Now, there's been a lot of hype around GPT-3 and large language models. Um, and, and some thought leaders have said, like, you know, um, it, these models can do really cool stuff, write stories and um, be creative and generate content. But the hype is, um, is really um, doesn't equal uh, what's um, the, the current state of the market is because there's no real um, application at scale for these new technologies. But I mean, um, if I'm honest, I, I use one of these pre-trained models um, on GPT-3 to help me develop this, uh, this very presentation, to help me sound it out and to help me find words for the thoughts that I had that I had difficulty expressing. More importantly, 
um, we are beginning to see how teams can use models like this to um, generate content, work seeker support content that can be distributed on our channels, social media, IVR, um, on chatbots in a rapid way. So we're just being able to seed and do some prompt engineering with uh, the things that we know to be true and make sure that we then are creating content which responds to the moment, to the needs of the current day of our um, network while remaining consistent uh, to the brand. Um, and so I'm not sure if um, it's overrated, this technology. I think that maybe the hype is justified, especially, especially when we start looking and how we can use this new conversational AI technology, which is really experiencing a step change with the introduction of natural language generation, how we can use it in conversations where language continues to be a barrier. So um, Sipokazi and many other young South Africans, um, they deserve to have a conversational experience where they are understood the language and conversation is natural and personalized for them and they feel seen and they feel important so this is possible and we're um in the spirit of partnership which i said you know that is the key we're partnering with um ar21 and ar21 is up there with the open ai's and cohere um doing such um fantastic work um in terms of using developing state-of-the-art um um, NLP technology and finding interesting ways to um, to apply it. And we're discovering how we can bring that into one of our latest products called Coach Me. Coach Me is a virtual coach chatbot that is trained up on, um, you know, a couple of years worth of um, highly evidence-based coaching conversations, goal-setting technique, and is getting ready to help thousands, hundreds of thousands, if not more, young people like Sipokazi overcome the barriers that they have to success, set both aspirational and practical goals and have ongoing conversations which are truly unique and take into consideration who they are, their preferences. And I think we're going to see um, some really amazing stuff happening. But the real call here. Um, and this is like, uh, I guess, the message that um, I want to land and I think that um, is probably felt already amongst everyone here is the social, the, the social imperative to use the best technology out there to solve the most intractable, intractable problems. When you see a meeting of the, the technologists and the brilliant minds out there with the um, not-for-profits who are rooted in the problem who are most in touch with the problem to connect with people that are most in touch with the solutions we need to use the best technology in the whole world to solve the toughest problems and if i may end off with one of my favorite quotes uh, we love quotes because uh, in just a few words you can make a big difference and um, so it's by Maya angelo you've probably heard it before at the end of the day people won't remember what you did or what you said but they will remember how you made them feel. Thank you very much.